interesting matchup because uh, if you thought Brandon fought was going to open a postseason series uh, you would have been pretty surprised. He is the guy. Let's talk about the Brewers roster. However first Adam McAlvey covers the Brewers on MLB.com. Biggest surprises on the roster include three players who haven't had a big league bat in weeks. And in the case of Jesse Winker months Winker Weimer and Miller are in Owen Miller the rookie Wisconsinite and Garrett Mitchell and Rowdy Telez not on the roster. Uh, and here are the most recent at bats for Weimer and Miller early to mid September Jesse Winker had a variety of injury problems back thigh quad and he hasn't hit in quite some time here are the probables it is Brandon fought rookie on the mound to start game one of a postseason series against a Cy Young Award winner game two goes back to the staff a Zach Gallen uh, and then game three Merrill Kelly and the Brewers are TBD Brandon Woodruff absence is huge and not to be yeah. Uh, understated for the Brewers but let's talk about the Diamondbacks who are not lined up perfectly here. Let's face it. They'd like to have Gallon start a postseason series but that's just not what they were able to do. Yeah uh, so look they had to do what they had to right to to uh, to get their one and two uh, make sure they got in. So I, I think what happens here is that you're obviously going to lean on knowing that you have to assume you got Gallon for deep in the game, right? This guy, we're talking Cy Young votes here. Uh, certainly, uh, Merrill Carroll is going to be a 1A to Gallon, but Gallon being their number one. You got to figure that the leash is going to be short. Uh, no question for me uh, with the with the D backs and just see what he's got. I, I really do. I think it's it's really important. You, you're facing Corbin uh, Corbin Burns. I know that that's uh, going to be a tough task for the offense. Uh, with them having Woodruff out, that that's favorable, right? You got Peralta coming in game two. Yep. I, I just see it as a, a bullpen game for the for the D-backs. Yeah. I mean, early I on. Early, early, early on, I, I think so. And that bullpen's good. That yeah. Bullpen, that bullpen's good. So Tori Lovello, you know, don't be surprised if he's mixing and matching right away. Uh, you know, obviously it lines up with Corbin Burns going for the Brewers early. But uh, listen, the D-backs, you know, if they to have the luxury though to still have Gallon and Kelly going two and three that's good with it maybe a bullpen game in game one so it's I, I, I'm not too worried about it it's not too worried about like it. A, a must win for the Brewers ironically right they're supposed to win this game mm. they've got their staff ace against a rookie who gave up a ton of homers this year yeah. in a very short sample size this is a game Milwaukee has to have if the script gets flipped and Arizona steals game one They've got Gallon lined up. They could they could sweep this thing. And we're talking about a tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's yeah, quick right. play. Yeah. And we know that the Diamondbacks have some really dynamic hitters in their lineup, including a guy who is for sure going to win National League Rookie of the Year. I say that kind of saltily, but StatCast powered by Google Cloud. Yes, Corbin Carroll makes it happen. Base runner runs leader according to StatCast. It's Carroll. You've got Yelich on this board as well. He is a multi-dimensional threat, and if he gets hot, case he could be a difference maker. You know what? I, I, being fortunate enough, we they played the we played the Yankees played the Diamondbacks at the end, so I got to see Corbin Carroll just Carroll just a couple weeks ago. This guy's a real deal. Mm. He can flat out hit. He hits for power. He's he's a game changer on the bases. I can't tell you how many times he would go first to third, score from first, steal bases. Yeah, he plays a great outfield. I mean, this guy is the real deal. And I tell you what, the biggest thing I loved about Corbin Carroll, he sets the tone for that line. Lineup. He really does top to bottom. This is a guy that lineup and that team follows. He's a gamer. He's a dog. He's professional. Mm -hmm. He's one of those guys where you're like that's our leader. You can see it right away even though he's a rookie. They follow Corbin Carroll. He's hard. I mean every, every part of the game that we admire and like uh, watching Corbin Carroll. I don't care if he's 23 years old. I don't care if he's a rookie. Uh, 25 bombs of 54 stolen bases. You're right. He makes the lineup. You got an igniter at the top of the order and he plays the game right. Like he's fun to watch. Yeah, First, I know that Tommy Pham was a great pickup, and yeah, Tom Marte and Walker, and they, you know, there's some components there. But it could be a guy like this, not put it all on his shoulders, but that could actually make a difference in a lineup that obviously needs to figure out a way to scratch some runs. First rookie to go 25-50 in Major League wow. history, and now that we're at the point of our preview that we're going to pick a series MVP in this Diamondbacks Brewer series, I'm assuming he's your guy. Is he your guy, you know Corbin what? Carroll? He's, he's not my guy. What? You just yeah. got through gushing. Hey, well, <laughs> hey, listen, because he's a great player. You know what? I'm going to have to go back to Gelich. 
I just think I like we he finally had the year that we were expecting. He's kind of backed away close to that. You know, he, he ended up hitting close to 20 bombs, 817 OPS, stole almost 30 bags. I, I felt like this was the Christian Yelich that we, we know. And the stars come out in the postseason, and Christian Yelich is going to be the MVP. All right, and we're doing this because, for whatever reason, uh, they don't anoint series MVPs yeah. in this round of the postseason. I think they should. So we're going We're going to do it preemptively. We're going to preseason, pre-series MVPs. Who's Wait, you now? know what, the way you said that, I, I feel bad that I'm not picking Corbin Carroll because I know <laughs> we're gushing on. But I, I think in the end, I, I, I lean toward, reluctantly, that, that, that the Brewers win the series. So it's hard to give an MVP to the uh, to the team that's not going to go. So De I think I think it is going to be a bullpen. I actually think it's going to go three day, uh, three games, and Devin Williams is going to play a big factor in two of their wins. Uh, he's been excellent. I know the whole Josh Hader trade and all that last year, but 61 games this year, 36 saves, 153. Know about his changeup. It's just unhittable in the 87 strikeouts that he's had. Uh, super impressive, and I think he's going to really factor into this series. Yeah, he's a difference maker for yep. sure. Well, Gordon why don't Carroll, we just... you're taking him, aren't you? No, I'm not either. As much <laughs> as I love him too. Let's make it a clean sweep for the Brewers. We all think Milwaukee's going to win this series, and I wanted to pick a matchup-proof hitter and a guy with a little salt on his cap, and that's Carlos Santana for me. Mm. What a great pickup it was by the Brewers to get him at the deadline. He come, uh, came through with some big moments for them, had some big hits, and to win a series MVP award in the best of three. It just takes one big knock, mm -hmm. and uh, I think Carlos Santana could be that right. guy. Like it's that it's like kind of unanimous. Pick. We've all got the Brewers. I kind of feel bad. I like Tori Lavella. <laughs> we all do. Hey, who knows? Who knows? What we love Tori. We love it.